In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve problems when you have a matched or paired sample. A matched or paired sample occurs when you're measuring two things with the same group of people. In this case, it could be the before and after weight of a weight loss program, which is the problem that we're about to do. So let's get right into it. A study was conducted to determine the effectiveness of a weight loss program. The table below shows the before and after weights of 10 subjects in the program. Is this program effective for reducing weight? Well, let's find out using a 5% significance level. So the first thing we need to do is calculate the differences in the before and after values. So let's add a new column called XD. Now, X sub D is the difference for each subject. So it's going to be the after weight minus the before weight. So for the first example, for subject one, his weight after the program is 169 pounds. We're going to use the unit pounds because I forgot to put it in there. And his before weight is 185 pounds. So 169 minus 185, that gives us negative 16 pounds, which is a reduction. So that's a good sign. So let's put these values here. First one is negative 16. And then we're going to repeat the process. So 187 minus 192, that's a difference of 5. And then 193 minus 206, that's a drop, in, a drop of 13. 177 to 176, that's a decrease of 1. 194 minus 225 is negative 31. Now, going from 168 to 171, that is an increase of 3. So the person uh, didn't lose weight. He actually gained weight there. 228 minus 256, that's negative 28. And then 217 minus 239 is negative 22. 204 minus 199, that is an increase of 5. So the program didn't benefit that person. And then 195 minus 218 is negative 23. Now, we also need to write the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. So let's go ahead and do that. What would you say would be the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis? Now, think about why this study is being conducted. It's to see if this weight loss program is effective at reducing weight. So we want to see if the mean difference is less than zero or negative, because if it's less than zero or negative, that means that the program is effective for decreasing weight. So the null hypothesis has to be the reverse statement. The mean difference has to be equal to or greater than zero. So now that we have our null and alternative hypotheses, we can move on to the next thing. That is, we need to calculate the mean or the sample mean of the differences, which is x bar and the subscript d for difference. So we're going to take the average of these numbers. So we're going to add up those 10 numbers. And then we're going to divide it by 10. So the last two are 5 and 23, negative 23. Hold on one second. This is going to take a minute, maybe less than a minute. So the sample mean that I got for the differences is negative 13.1. Now the next thing we need to do is calculate the standard deviation for those differences. So let's go ahead and do that. So there's two simple ways in which you can do this. The first way is to use the formula. So it's going to be the square root we're going to take each difference, the first one being negative 16, and we're going to subtract it by 
the mean difference. So that's negative 13.1 squared. So the next one is going to be negative 5 minus negative 13.1 squared. Now, whenever you have two negative signs, you can make it positive. So you need to repeat this process until you get to the last one, which is going to be negative 23. And instead of minus negative 13.1, we can write plus 13.1 squared. And because we're dealing with the sample standard deviation, this is going to be divided by n minus 1 as opposed to n. So this is going to be 10 minus 1. So you should get, if you do it correctly, 13.025. And that is a terrible looking too. Let's do that again. Now, you're probably wondering, is there a simpler way to calculate the standard deviation? And there is. If you have Excel, you can easily do it. So I'm going to take a minute and show you how to calculate the standard deviation using Excel. So now, using Excel, let's type in our data. So the first number we have for the differences is negative 16, and then was negative 5, negative 13, negative 1, and so forth. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to type in equal STDEV. Now, there's two options, dot S and dot P. We want to calculate our sample standard deviation. So we're going to use dot S. And then open the parenthesis, highlight the data, close the parenthesis. And there we have it. So it's 13.025. That is our sample standard deviation for this problem using Excel. So now let's move on. Now that we have the sample standard deviation and the sample mean for the differences, we need to get our critical t value. Now, notice that for the alternative hypothesis, the mean difference is less than zero. So we're going to use a left tail t test. So we need to find the critical t value that separates the rejection region from the fail to reject region. Alpha is 5% or 0 0.05. The degrees of freedom is going to be n minus 1, and n is 10, so 10 minus 1 is 9. So our t value will have 9 degrees of freedom with an alpha value of 0 0.05. So let's go to the student's t distribution table to get the answer we're looking for. So looking at the first column, we have 9 degrees of freedom and an alpha value of 0 0.05. So that gives us this number, a t value of 1.833. So that is our critical t value that we're going to use. Since we're using a left tail t test, we're going to use a negative 1.833. So now what we need to do is get our calculated t value and compare it to our critical t value. The formula that we're going to use is this. It's going to be the sample mean of the differences minus the population mean of the differences divided by the standard error, which is the standard deviation over the square root of n. So x bar d is negative 13.1 mu sub d is 0 based on our null hypothesis. The sample standard deviation is 13.025 and n is 10 since we have 10 subjects we're dealing with. And so let's go ahead and plug this in. So you should get negative 3.18. So this critical t value, or rather, this calculated t value, is much less than our critical t value of negative 1.83. So as we can see, it's located in the rejection region, which means we need to reject the null hypothesis in favor of 
the alternative hypothesis. So we could say that there is sufficient evidence that this weight loss program is effective in reducing weight. Now the next thing we need to do is construct the confidence interval. So let's go ahead and do that. First, let's clear away a few things. So the confidence interval is going to be our sample mean difference plus or minus the margin of error, which is T, that is our critical T value, not our calculated T value, times the standard error, which is SD over the square root of N. So X bar D, that's negative 13.1. Our critical T value was negative 1.83. Standard deviation is 13.025, n is 10. So negative 1.833, well, we can make that positive because we're going to have this plus or minus sign. So 1.833 times 13.025 divided by the square root of 10 is... 7.5499, which we can round that and say it's 7.55. So our lower bound is going to be negative 13.1 minus 7.55, which is negative 20.65. And the upper bound of our confidence interval is going to be negative 13.1 plus 7.55. And that's negative 5.55. So we are 95% confident that the mean difference, that is mu d, is somewhere in this range. So notice that the null hypothesis says that mu d is either equal to zero or positive. There are no positive values or zero in that interval. Therefore, that gives us further reason to recheck the null hypothesis. So there's sufficient evidence that mu d is less than zero. As we can see, it's between negative 20.65 and negative 5.55. We're 95% certain that mu d is in that range. Now the last thing we need to do is determine the margin of error, which we could see right here. It's this number. 7.55 is the margin of error. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.